With the new weekly featured raid and dungeon rotator, many players will be trying some of the older activities for the first time. So today I'll be covering the Prophecy Dungeon, originally released in the Season of Arrivals, so you can complete it to get your pinnacle drops. Before we cover the encounters, let's look at the core mechanic of the dungeon. Throughout the dungeon, you will find Taken Knights, which drop motes when killed. Each knight drops three motes, with the color depending on where you were stood when you killed it. For example, standing in a shadow will make the knight drop dark motes, and standing in the light will drop light motes for you. When you've collected five of the same type of motes, you'll be able to dunk them at a deposit point, which look like pillars of either darkness or light. In the entrance section, you just need to practice this mechanic by depositing a couple stacks of motes to open up the doors, where you will then find the first encounter, the Phalanx Echo. This first encounter, the Phalanx Echo boss fight, puts you up against a giant taken phalanx, our favorite enemy type. This guy loves to push you off the tiny map, so make sure to dodge its attacks as much as you can. This encounter is a simple execution of the mechanics already learned, where you will kill knights to pick up the motes required to initiate a damage phase. In total, two dark and two light deposit spots need to be activated. Though this can be sliced in half if you manage to get the jumping just right and pass through both hitboxes during the dunking animation. After each successful dunk, the rings around the arena will shift, changing the patterns of light and dark on the floors, so make sure you're standing in the right place when killing the knights. To damage the boss, I'd recommend using a well of radiance and swords, as it makes piercing the immunity shields of the taken goblins and the boss's phalanx shield much easier. If you use this, the boss should be defeated in no time. Now comes the desert. You can find a secret chest here, where the yellow sand pile on the floor marks the location. Next, you will find small pockets of taken enemies and blights which need to be killed all around the desert, until the door to the second encounter finally opens. The second encounter takes place in a giant cube, where you will change the direction of gravity to move around the different sides of the cube. Each face has a circle in the center, and you can see Toland, the taken spark, on one of these sides. After killing a hobgoblin, knights will spawn, which you will use to gather moats and eventually deposit in the spot below where Toland's spark is. As always, matching the right color moats and deposit spot is very important. After you deposit a stack of moats, the circle in the center will start glowing, dragging you into the cube at the center of the map, and placing you down into a rotated version of the map. You need to keep following the direction that Toland shows you, and eventually you will reach the end of the encounter, where two weak minibosses need to be defeated before you can grab your rewards. If Toland's spark is ever on the top face of the cube then you need to rotate twice, so you can activate any of the sides of the cube, but must then do it again to finally reach him. If you need help with any dungeon or raid, or just can't find a fire team, join our Discord server. We teach raids and dungeons all the time, if you need a hand just DM me or post a message in the server. Back to the dungeon, and after crossing the desert again, you will reach the Rainbow Road Sparrow section. Take any path you like here, either by foot or by sparrow, to reach the launcher at the bottom. Make sure to stop at the room just before the end, where you can take this tunnel to reach the second secret chest in this dungeon. The final encounter takes place against the Kel Echo, a giant shadow of a fallen Kel, possessed by the Taken. In this fight, the main room is a giant pyramid, where each round takes place on a different side, much like the second encounter's cube. At each corner of the room, you will find a copy of the boss, all three of which need to be removed in order to reach the damage phase. To remove each of these echoes, you need to collect moats and dunk them at the nearby deposit point, removing the echo and spawning in a Taken Ogre. 
After all three echoes have been removed, you can stand in the quicksand to reach the damage area. In the damage area, you chase the Kel Echo across a series of floating platforms as you damage it, making sure not to fall to your death. At the same time, you need to make sure that you stay within the circle of light shown around the boss, or you will gain stacks of dark entropy, killing you at 10 stacks, so it's important that you don't let the boss run too far ahead during damage. Dealing damage to the boss seems to slow its teleporting speed, and give you more time to damage it, though this may not actually be true. If you didn't deal enough damage, you can head back into the quicksand to return to the pyramid room and keep going, otherwise you'll get teleported to where you can find your rewards. Thanks for watching this guide video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed if you enjoyed it, and remember to join our Discord server if you need any help, otherwise good luck in the dungeon.